Are you curious about the history and stories of West Coast hip hop? Well, here it is. As time went on and style writing and graffiti art came above ground, things started to change. Writers went from painting on trains, buses, and walls to canvases and having those without knowledge of their vocabulary, history, and origin critique and consume their work. As media outlets, photographers, and traditional art writers started focusing on the work of these inner city youth, it did a few things. It made their work more accessible to an audience of wealthy and privileged art collectors who wouldn't have otherwise set foot in their neighborhoods. The focus was on the work they produced without the history, people, or understanding their why. And lastly, it made it easy for others outside of this community to lift the aesthetic of style writing and graffiti art to make it more mainstream. The fact is that this same media demonized early style writers. It was considered a nuisance, an eyesore, and there were serious consequences in campaigns to crack down and arrest style writers if they were caught. It turns out that graffiti was a bad word and has a stigma that's been difficult to shake ever since. Some style writers like Los Angeles-based Risk One adopted the term aerosol art to try and distance themselves from the baggage associated with graffiti. For those who want to continue developing their art past getting up and painting for their peers, had to deal with special circumstances that street artists didn't have to experience. In addition to the graffiti stigma that continues from the 1980s, some found it difficult to bring their style writing past urban aesthetic, and history into this new art world on their own terms. Some artists have been able to find a way to transition from graffiti to street art or other forms of artistic expression. However, it's uncommon. Former Los Angeles graffiti artists like Mr. Cartoon, Gajin Fujita, and Chaz Barroquez were able to find success in tattooing or the fine art world. However, there are still many others who weren't able to carve out a consistent place for themselves and street art may be a contributing factor. With the blurring of the lines between the two art forms, there is more competition for jobs and opportunities. In the 2000 book, Stay Up, Los Angeles Street Art, art professor James Dacian mentions how many street artists are trained at art schools and work in creative fields like graphic design or illustration. For them, street art is a way to explore and develop new ideas outside of their formal job. Often with little knowledge about the style writing and graffiti communities, Street artists have access to share their work without the stigma that's been attached to graffiti artists who've already laid the groundwork for them. Street art is more sanitized and accessible. It heavily borrows the urban feel, tone, and aesthetic from style writing and graffiti art, and it makes it easier to understand for a larger audience. This can be seen in the work of Shepard Ferry, creator of Obey, and Andre the Giant Has a Posse, and anonymous England-based artist Bansky. Both artists focus on image and text-based art, have developed big public and celebrity followings and sell their work for five and six figures. Street art and its aesthetic can reach places where style writing and graffiti art aren't welcomed. This access matters. It determines who can benefit from the opportunities and resources available to live off their art. When asked about the commercial appeal of street art and whether it's changing the way people look at style writing and graffiti art, Create had this to say. I'm going to tell you why that's a good question because that has actually taken over a lot of the shine of people who use spray cans as their medium. Mm -hmm. Here's the crazy part, slightly. A lot of those people who pick up a can, they haven't even been painting for years in terms of using spray can I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden now that they make certain cans low pressure or they make special tips, and there's nothing wrong with that. I don't want to seem like I'm contradicting myself because I, I know I'm not. But it's nothing wrong because we, we love to be able to play around with it. But what, what but we just feel disrespected when we was the ones that, when it was raw, grimy, and gritty, where people didn't like it. They didn't want to see it. And, and we were doing amazing work back then. But we never got our proper shine and our proper respect due. 
Now, all of a sudden, for those who got it sort of slightly easy, they getting a lot of the opportunities and work. Now, a lot of people say, well, you guys are hating. You guys are bitter. No, we're not bitter. we just, just saying, hey, you know, make for sure you make it uh, equal across the playing field to give opportunities to those that deserve it to be uh, recognized. We're not begging for it. It's not like we like, please look at me, look at me, please. What about me? We saying, hey, man, look, we've been doing this for years when you guys didn't even recognize this way before they kids was doing it. We was doing it underneath the streets where they back in the old days, they they had parts on the streets where you could be above ground, walk underneath and end up on the other side of the street. We used to do pieces underneath those street tunnels. Oh, wow. We used to do pieces behind dirty, abandoned alleys where people wouldn't dare even step into and doing mm-hmm. masterpieces that we consider to be jewels and gems. See, that's why we upset. we like, whoa, hold up. We was doing, like, stuff that people can't even imagine. Mm-hmm. We was like, what about, what about when we was do, doing that? And we was getting looked down upon and frowned on. And when, when people told us it wasn't art, now all of a sudden, it's art all of a sudden. But now that it is considered art, we we overlook 